Hey YouTube, what's up? Dr. T here and welcome to the Altcoin Express and my hometown of St. Petersburg, Florida. So in this section we will deal with all things pertaining to artificial intelligence otherwise known as AI. DeepMind is a subsidiary of Google for those not aware. It's situated in London it was purchased by Google from DeepMind itself back in 2014 after the Atari game publication. They have anonymity and have been given funds to grow. They are now up to the many hundreds of PhDs in artificial intelligence and neuroscience which they combine in their efforts to further their um, adventures into uh, uncovering the areas of artificial general intelligence. They are by far the largest research group in artificial intelligence in the world and they are the leader in what comes out in this field uh, as exemplified by their AlphaGo and AlphaGo Master and so on and so forth. Now they're venturing into the 3D world and here we have a publication on their blog Capture the Flag, the Emergence of Complex Cooperative Agents. Mastering the strategy, tactical understanding and team play involved in multiplayer video games represents a critical challenge for artificial intelligence research. Now, through new developments in reinforcement learning, our agents have achieved human level performance in Quake 3 Area Capture the Flag, a complex multi-agent environment with one of the three canonical 3D first person player games these agents demonstrate the ability to team up with both artificial agents and humans and as a sidestep their counterpart uh, open ai have just uh, breached the ability to defeat um, the early lower ranks in the delta 2 in a five by five team play so they are kind of following the broad path together in different domains so we'll carry on with this so here's a picture of their system and here is the indoor map of the agents uh, let's press on this and see what it does so it's going to give us a 40 second run around of the agent in the environment showing what's going on interaction fights between them there Oh, and now in a, in a desert environment, open open world kind of environment. Interesting. So let's move on. So um, agent observes raw pixels on the screen. Above four of our trained agents play together on an indoor and outdoor procedurally generated capture the flag level. Billions of people inhabit the planet, each with their own individual goals and actions, but still capable of coming together through teams, organizations and societies in impressive displays of collective intelligence. This is a setting we call multi-agent learning. Many individual agents must act independently, yet learn to interact and cooperate with other agents. This is an immensely difficult problem because with co-adapting agents, the world is constantly changing. To investigate this problem, we look at 3D first-person multiplayer video games. These games represent the most popular genre in video games and have captured the imagination of millions of gamers because of their immersive gameplay, as well as the challenges they pose in terms of strategy, tactics, hand-eye coordination and team play. The challenge 
for our agent is to learn directly from raw pixels to produce actions. This complexity makes first-person multiplayer game a fruitful and active area of research within the AI community. The game we focus on in this work is Quake 3 Area, which we aesthetically modified through all game mechanics remaining the same. Though, Quake 3 Area has laid the foundations for many modern first-person video games and has attracted a long-standing competitive esports scene. Esports, it is. Um, we train agents that learn and act as individuals, but which can be able to play on teams with and against other agents, artificial or human. The rules for CTF are simple, but the dynamics are complex. Two teams of individual players complete, compete on a given map with the goal of capturing the opponent's flag while protecting their own. To gain tactical advantage, they can tag the opponent team members and send them back to their spawn points. The team with the most flag captures after five minutes wins. So we have another little video here. Let's just run through that. Same thing, but we'll go for it. Nice. From a multi-agent perspective, let's move out of that for a bit. From a multi-agent perspective, CTF requires players to both successfully cooperate with their teammates as well as compete with the opposing team while remaining robust to any playing style they might encounter. To make things even more interesting, we consider a variant of C. TF in which the map layer layout cha changes from match to match. As consequence, our agents are forced to acquire general strategies rather than memorizing the map layout. Additionally, to level the playing field, our learning agents experience the world of CTF in a similar way to humans. They observe a stream of pixel images and issue actions through an emulated game controller. So it's showing multiple environments here, I guess. CTF is played on procedurally generated environments such that agents must generalize to unseen maps. So the structure of the grids are changing and that's uh, variegating data sets of training the agents. Um, our agents must learn from scratch how to see, act, cooperate and compete in unseen environments or from a single reinforcement signal per match. Whether their team won or not, this is a challenging learning problem and its solution is based on three general ideas for reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is the area in which I am currently studying, having completed the first run round of program in the grid world and now have to get back to the AI proper um, and implement that which is ongoing at the moment. Uh, rather than training a single agent we train a population of agents which learn by playing with each other providing a diversity of teams and opponents. Each agent in the population learns its own internal reward signal which allows agents to generate their own internal goals such as capture a flag. A two-tier optimization process optimizes agents' internal rewards directly for winning and uses reinforcement learning on the internal rewards to learn the agents' policies Agents operate at two timescales, fast and slow, which improves their ability to use memory and generate consistent action sequences. 
Well, this is kind of complicated, but I'll just leave it on there because you can come and find this and look at it yourself if you want to. Um, the resulting agent, dubbed the for the win agent, learns to play CTF to a very high standard. Crucially, the learning agent policies are robust to the size of the maps, the number of teammates and the other players on their teams. Below, you can explore some games on both the outdoor procedural environments where FTW agents play against each other as well as games in which humans and agents play together on indoor procedural environments. So we'll just briefly wander through these. It shows the pictures of their various indoor and outdoor environments. And uh, we'll press this, see what this does. Shows a live game, captures the flag, both capture the flag, interact, have a little dance. One of them takes it, looks like the other one gets reset. Beautiful, beautiful graphics. I mean, Whatever system they're running on to run this graphics is quite stunning. It's a 3D graphics uh, simulator as well. <coughs> well, we won't let that go on because obviously it's going to take quite a while, but they obviously get to the end at some point. Um, we run a tournament including 40 human players in which humans and agents are randomly matched up in games as both opponents as teammates. So we see a little live stream of their agents playing the game as humans against the AI probably, or is it humans against humans? I'm not too sure. That. An early test tournament with humans playing CTF with and against trained agents and other humans. Oh, so it's mixing it up. They're playing agents and they're playing other humans and learning from that as a, a build-up of the database information. Okay. The FTW agents learn to become much stronger than the strong baseline methods and exceed the win rate of the human players. In fact, in a survey amongst participants, they were rated more collaborative than human participants. So we see the graph here. Self-play, average human, self-play plus what, what RS, I'm not sure what that stands for, strong human, and what FTW gets, right? Going on. Going beyond mere performance evaluation, it is important to understand the emergent complexity in the behaviors and internal representations of these agents. To understand how agents represent game state, we look at activation patterns of the agent's neural networks plotted on a plane. Dots in the figure below represent situations during play with closed by dots representing similar activation patterns. These dots are colored according to the high level CTF game state in which the agent finds itself. In which room is the agent? What is the status of the flag? What teams and opponents can be seen? We observe clusters of the same color indicating that the agent represents similar high level game states in a similar manner. So that's quite a little bit of complexity to say the least. That's being represented in machine learning uh, as it's a classification representation, quite complex algorithm to put that together in machine learning. But the agents are never told anything about the rules of the game, yet learn about fundamental game concepts and effectively develop an intuition for CTF. In fact, we can find particular neurons that code directly for some of the most important game states, such as a neuron that activates when the flag's <coughs> agent's flag is taken, or a neuron that activates when an agent's team is holding a flag. The paper provides further analysis covering the agent's use of memory and visual 
attention aside from the rich representation how do the agents actually behave first we notice that the agents had very fast reaction times and were very accurate taggers which could explain their performance however by artificially reducing this accuracy and reaction time we see that this was only a factor of a factor in their success ad hoc effect of tagging accuracy and we're getting to the bottom of it now though unsupervised learning we established the pro to typical behavior agents and humans to discover that agents in fact learn human-like behavior such as following teammates and camping in the opponent's base home base opponent's base teammate following these behavior emerge in the course of training through reinforcement learning and population level evaluation and behavior such as team following following out of favor as agents learning to cooperate more com complementary manner and there's another little thing there but this is getting long so that's that yeah um i think with the uh, the o uh, alpha go uh, David Silver had a team, uh, I think there were up to like 20 people in the team, certainly quite robust in terms of numbers, all PhDs in artificial intelligence, uh, reinforcement learning from all over Europe, they've got a very diverse group of teams. So in this lot there will be a team leader and a group of anything from 10 to 20 people depending on the needs that the team will have and their efficiencies of working together at that number. Um, I don't really know how many there are, but they're multi, multi. Well, they got 400 PhDs, so they've got, uh, you know, they've got quite a lot of teams doing different work, theory, uh, all various aspects of neural aspects of. I mean, it just you'd have to go on the website to really look at it, but that's another paralleling improvement uh, along with um, Open AI. I'm not sure what their next step will be, um, but uh, no doubt we'll see. Interesting.